Hi guys, it is now the end of the first weekend of seven days of having fern with us. So I'm just going to do a little recap on what we've done with her so far and, and the progress we've made. So, um, the first thing that I've been trying to achieve and concentrate on is getting the dog to follow me around everywhere I go. Every time I move, I say the words with me because that's my word of command that I want the dog to be with me and encourage her to come with me. And when she's coming with me, I keep saying those words to embed them into her head and anchor them in as a command. Um, if she moves away from me, then I walk the opposite direction and encourage her to come with me. And so far, so good. I can't move without her being under my feet. That's what I want, really. As annoying as it can be sometimes. Um, another thing that I'm really keen on doing right from the start is getting eye contact with the dog and praising it. So every single time she looks at me, no matter what we're doing, I tell her she's a good girl and I give her a little tickle under her chin and I just make a fuss of her because I want to reward that. I want, when she's older, I want constant eye contact off her as much as I can. So the reason I'm starting now is to just imprint that in her. Um, next thing, thing that I do and I think that everybody should do is we always use meal time as a training opportunity. So rather than putting food in a bowl and putting the bowl down in the corner of the room and letting your dog go and get it or doing any of these fancy challenges that are knocking around where you make your dog wait 25 minutes before he can go and eat his dinner use that food and feed your dog out of your hand that way firstly your dog is associating you as being the provider and as being a bit higher up the, the hierarchy chain and um, it's also associating your hand with where all good things come from and associating you with where all good things come from and later on if you want to start using hand signals the dog's always going to have half an eye on your hand to see is there any more food coming um, what I always do with the older established dog she's, she's eight months old and she knows quite a lot of what I wanted to know but I use every meal time to reinforce that so I'll get a bowl in my hand I'll use a bit of food and I'll tell her to come when she comes and sits in front of me she gets food I'll tell her to sit I'll tell her down I'll tell her wait I'll tell her heel and I'll walk up and down the living room in the kitchen doing that every meal time because that's 100 150 opportunities per day or 700 to 1000 opportunities per week to embed something in that dog's brain it's, it's free training if you think of it like that and it's also building a better bond um, we've been shaping behaviour with food, so we've been using food to encourage the dog into a sit or into a down in a cage and on a, a placemat. And um, the reward for putting a bum on the floor or putting a whole body on the floor is getting the food. And you can, you know, the dog really quickly associates if I want the food in his hand. I've got to put my bum down, or I've got to lie down, or whatever it may be. So there's another one for you. Um, so we've used food to build associations, positive associations, so I've spent quite a bit of time feeding her in a cage, so she builds a positive association with a cage, I've spent a lot of time feeding her when she's on a lead, I've spent a lot of time feeding her when she's on a placemat, I've spent a lot of time feeding her when my wife's hoovering up, so she associates that sound of the hoover with good positive things. Um, Myself and my wife have been doing recall, so she's been at one end of the room, I've been at the other, and we've been gaining the dog's attention, so the dog's ready to come to us and rearing, and then the second my wife says her word of command for recall, I put the dog down and let the dog run to her, and we switch over, we only do three or four or five at a time, but we do it several times a day. Uh, another time is, if the dog walks away from me, and I move quickly in the opposite direction, stand in the stationary position and then give the recall command then as, as well as the with me I do it with the recall um, retrieves so far she's done five retrieves I haven't overdone it I've done a two or two and a one um, because I don't want to overdo it I want her to be hyped for retrieving because that's going to be a big part of her job when she's a little bit older um, we've done lead walking all we've done is up and down the kitchen 30 seconds at a time several times uh, both my wife and me have done it um, and we just want to associate or to make the association in the dog's mind of her being on the lead the 
lead being loose, her following me, and it being fun. That's all we want to do. Uh, so I think that's pretty much it. Now at no point yet have we introduced any words of command apart from come or with me. Um, there's no sit, there's no down, there's no pull, there's none of these trendy things. All we're doing at the minute is getting that behaviour that we want. Getting the bum on the floor, getting the eye contact, getting the line down. We're not saying sit every time she does it because we want to get the movement and the behaviour perfect before we start complicating things with white noise and background noise and distractions and stuff like that. Now, I spend an awful lot of time training the dog, but I don't spend an awful lot of time training the dog. She's in a cage most of the time because when she's in a cage, she can't get up to mischief, she can't chew things, she is less inclined to wee or poo, and she's sitting in a cage, hopefully, bored out of her brains, looking at me and my wife, thinking, I really want to be there, I, want to, I really want to get out and go and play with my mummy and my daddy and entertain them and do everything that they want me to do and make them happy. So then when she does come out of the cage, we give her, her our 100% attention. We're not wandering around on a phone, we're not cooking dinner, we're not doing anything else but giving her attention. So if she can't learn any bad habits, she can't chew anything, she's, she won't weed. She's weed, since we've had her, she's weed five times in the house and pooed, a tiny little poo, and uh, three of them, and the one poo was on the first day. So since that first day, she's weed in the house twice. Uh, one of them was my fault for leaving in the cage for an hour when I went out, and the other one was just an accident we see, didn't see quick enough. But, I think that's an exceptional exceptional result for a week's worth of having a puppy, of only having that. And it's because the time she is out of the cage, she's got our 100% attention. Um, so far, she's not had any toys, because I'm, in, in her mind, I want to be the, the positive thing. I don't want to leave her distracted with a toy. Hey, people are looking at you. Good gear. Um, We've not given her any chews. We've, she's got a little tendon that she pinches off a big sister every now and then and we let her have that for a minute or two. But giving them things to chew out of the cage is teaching them that you can chew things out of the cage and we don't want to teach that. So we're, we're, we're avoiding her having things like that. Um, toilet training. So we, we pick her up from a cage or from wherever she is. We walk her out to the one area that we use, which is the most boring area we've got available to us, it's block paving, there aren't any distractions or smells there. We put her down, completely ignore her, unless we want to, unless we're getting eye contact off her, which we reward, or unless she's moving away from us, in which case we call her back to us. We want to roll us around us. Apart from that we just ignore her. And we let we, we sort of look away but we're actually looking at her through the corner of her eye. Spotting that behaviour the telltale signs that her nose has gone down she's starting to spin around or, or move around quickly mean that she needs a wee. The, the second that she's doing the wee or the poo is when we give the words of command, busy busy, or what, you can use whatever you want. We don't give those commands until she's physically doing that though. And we don't do it when she's running on sniffing because otherwise you're teaching her that when you say that, that you're actually teaching her to sniff. So it's sort of a uh, counterproductive so you only give that command when they're doing the action and I think that's pretty much all we've done so we're not spending more than one or two minutes with each thing but we're doing it 10 or 15 times a day so all together in a day it's probably 20 minutes we're spending maximum most of it's because we're filming these videos and it takes a little bit more time than calling a dog to you or wherever it may be and so it's easily achievable for everybody it doesn't take a great deal of time, it just takes a little bit of commitment and um, repetition, consistency, but everybody's capable of doing that. If it was a kid, you, you would have no problems and this one's going to live with us for 15, 20 years hopefully. So we need to put the same amount of effort in that we would with a kid or with another human being and then we'll, we'll reap the rewards a bit further down the line. So that's the end of week one, end of seven days of pleasure. And uh, we'll, we'll start back with week two and what we're going to try and work on in week two tomorrow and fill you in along the way. Night-night.